So welcome to the NGS short course. Today's topic will be NGS genome or transcriptome assembly on HPIC. And again, my name is Shi Chung Wang. I'm buying from Max Scientist in AgriLife Research and uh, I'm also part of the HPIC team. Okay, so if you, we're gonna do some hands-on exercise. If you don't have an account yet, uh, please go to hps.temo.edu and uh, click on the quick link, apply for account. I hope everyone already have an account, so. Okay, let's start. Uh, I, will, I will assume you have a knowledge about sequencing and other things, so I'm gonna start with genome assembly today. Genome assembly is a very difficult task in uh, bioinformatics. It actually, I would say it's probably one of the most difficult tasks in, uh, in bioinformatics. So what is a genome assembly? So basically it's trying to put together pieces, put all the pieces together to make, to come, to come out the chromosome sequence. You know, it's very difficult because when we do sequencing, usually we get fragmented sequence. Right? If you do Illumina short read, you get 50 base pair. Uh, if you do pair n, it'll be 50 plus 50. So those are really short sequences considering a big genome, right? So if I can have uh, like a metaphor here, it's like you have a lot of books and you shredded them and you got those pieces and somehow you hope to assemble them and come out of the whole book. So it's a very difficult task. And the first human genome project actually you know, how much it costs, it costs $3 billion and it take almost like 10 years to finish. So it's a difficult task. But the good thing is now with the new technologies like a long read or out like a bi nano, like those, all those uh, really long read sequence technologies can help us to solve this problem a little bit easier. But still, it's very difficult. Okay. Uh, it's more feasible now than before because we can generate a lot of data with the really high throughput NGS technology, like, uh, like for example, the Illumina uh, Nova 6, 6000 can produce uh, three terabytes of data per run. And you know, if we look at the human genome, it's only three GB. So it's like 1000 X per run for the human genome. It's more than enough for uh, de novo assembly. And the cost is getting lower. Uh, you don't have to like spend ten, uh, three billion dollars to build a reference genome now. Usually, if you do a, a de novo assembly with, with Illumina, you will need to have fifty to one hundred x coverage. So its cost is really low now. So the only matters is all the is the algorithms and the, the computing resources you need. So if you assemble an annotation of small genome like bacteria or fungal, so it's really it's quite simple. So you can, you can assemble a E. coli genome like in just like a few minutes, for example. Well, maybe not a few minutes, maybe like a half hour or something. So now, before like those really uh, big genomes take a month or even years like human genome to finish, but now uh, with the correct technology, with the, uh, enough uh, data, you can finish in, in a month or something. Okay, so what's going to affect your genome assembly? So when you look at a genome, we need to take into account, first is the genome size. So because we need to generate the data, if the genome is big, and we even if with the same coverage depth of data, we need more, right? Um, the same coverage, we need more data to, to achieve that coverage. So a big genome, you really need a lot of data, that means more uh, cost more, and it means you need more sequencing. Uh, sometimes if a genome has a lot of repeat, like uh, repeat means like a uh, similar, very similar sequence, but uh, presenting the genome multiple times, like in different locations, those are repeats. So those are really hard to resolve. If your genome has a lot of repeats, then you, that's going to be a problem. So you need to think about something like uh, have a really long read to cover uh, the unique part, not just the repeat, so you can assemble them. So. And other features, other things in the genome like heterozygosity, uh, highly heterozygous uh, genomes can lead to more fragmented assemblies. Well, it's obvious because if, when you say heterozygous, it means it have different alleles in different, uh, like a, a different haploid, right? So when you try assembly, 
the assembler saw some errors, saw some like uh, uh, variations there and will create a bubble. So it's just, it's just different ways to go through that uh, very, very, very variable size. So it's gonna, it's gonna be hard to have uh, uh, a longer assembly, ex extended assembly can be give you, instead of one assembly, probably give you two assemblies because you cannot, uh, cannot resolve that part. Um, the next one is a polyploidy level. If you have a diploid genome, it's, it's much easier than trying to assemble a, a tetraploid or hexaploid genome. So many of cases when you're dealing with polyploidy genomes, you don't try to assemble them at once. Let's say I have, let's say for, let's take wheat example. A wheat has a six um, six genomes. So you you don't try to assemble six at once. You actually separate them. Let's say wheat has A B D genome. So a separate genome sep uh, A and the B and the D. So I assemble A and the B and the D separately. So that looks that makes a case like a diploid genome assembly. So it's much easier. But for doing that, you need to have something called like a flow sorting that can separate chromosomes. So you need something else to help you to do that. Uh, one more thing, like a GC content. If you have, if your genome has extremely low or extremely high GC content in a genome region, it's gonna cause problem for sequencing, especially for Illumina sequencing by synthesis technologies. Uh, so to to help that, to compensate that, you can uh, either increase the coverage or use the sequencing technology that will not have that GC bias, for example, the PAC bio or the long read like a nano Um, So if you are familiar with sequencing technologies, we know we have basically two types of thing, right? Short read or long read. Short read like Illumina, the really high throughput and accuracy is very good. Long read uh, platforms like PacBio SQL2 is also very high throughput, like Ox Oxford Nanopore, very high throughput. And it can generate longer reads, like even longer than 30 KB. But the, the accuracy is sometimes relatively lower compared to Illumina. Let's say if Illumina accuracy is 99.999% and the, the long read PacBio SQL2 or Nanopore probably like before they do any error correction or consensus building, probably like 70%, something like that. But you can have much higher, you can achieve much higher accuracy for this long read. You can do consensus building or do error correction with the Illumina uh, data. So long read obviously is, a, is the thing we want when you're doing genome assembly, but it's because those problems. And so people will do both sometimes, we will do uh, short read sequencing because it has it has high accuracy and you'll do long read sequencing because it has long span so it can bring together those contexts if if they are together right so this is a brief description of the illumina tech, not short read technology so you, you have the fragmented dna and you attach adapter sequence adapters on both ends then when you and attach to the uh, flow cell as for sequencing and I'm gonna do a synthesis there and it reads the signals. So I won't go through details. I think we have been talking about this in the previous courses. And long read sequence is pack bio. So pack bio has a, it can use a enzyme and fix to the bottom of another well and the molecular gonna go through and you're gonna enzyme gonna read those, actually gonna cut those and it give out the signals so that the pack bio machine can detect it. So you see here is different uh, it's, it's different technology compared to Illumina. And then Nanopore is kind of similar to, uh, to PacBio. So, so for Illumina and the PacBio, you will need to make a libraries. For, for Nanopore, it's somehow it's, you just load the, the DNA or RNA. You don't need to, uh, to my understanding, you don't, you don't have those, you don't have to do a lot of pre-processing. Basically, that's why those Nanopore uh, devices, they are really small and portable. And so you can do uh, sequencing in the field. You can do sequencing in the rainforest, do sequencing in the space center or something. So if you look at here the, on the image, it's like you have a, uh, they have a not, you have a small molecular 
and create a nanopore and the DNA molecules go through this nanopore. And once the different bases pass and it give a different pulse of voltage or something, then you're gonna, you, that's a signal you're gonna detect and report the sig, report ATGC to you. So you see here, if you have a very long DNA fragment, you're gonna go through this, non, this nanopore and it's basically gonna be read. So you have a very long, very long uh, reads. Oh, this is one of the, this is smallest machine nanopore produced. It's called uh, Minion. And it's like really tiny, it's like a USB drive. You can see the finger here. So, and Tax AM actually hold the patent for this much for this kind of like technology. So it's part of Tax AM, we can say. Okay, so now we know the data we're gonna get. We're gonna get short read, we're gonna get long read, it doesn't matter. But we have we need to figure out how to assemble them. So basically how to piece, how to put those pieces together. So before this very um, before this NGS thing, uh, we do like uh, single sequencing. So we don't have really high throughput data. And uh, the algorithm that we use like overlay, overlap, layout, and consensus assembly. So basically you're trying to figure out the overlapping between the reads first, read one, read two, read three, and look, figure out the overlapping part and put them together and come to the consensus. That's the assembly, right? And with the new NGS data, and there's so many reads there. So this approach is not feasible. It's not efficient anymore. Because when you have billions of reads, this approach is not really efficient anymore. So the new technology, uh, new algorithms like a deep brewing graph assembly, this is the most popular one. So it's trying to build KMERS first. Like uh, you have a, yeah, say you have a one, two, three, uh, one, two, three. It's like an eight basis read, and you can build a KMERS, a TTC, TCA with the uh, with the one base switch KMERS. So it's three, it's a streamer, <laughs> or, or or it should be a, some different words, but you have three bases in this KMERS. So case equals three in this case, and for the for the eight base read, you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six KMERS. So based on the cameras, you can actually also figure out how the read one and read two or read three overlapped. So you're gonna build a graph from this, from this, for example here, CGA, if I add a T with GAT, so it's how they link together. And if you have uh, something different, you're gonna create a, another different path to go through there. So if it, this part can be like, a, we can sometimes we call it bubble, because it's like a pop out from the main string. So based on the walking of this path from the from the start to the end, you can have a come you can come out a sequence. So that is assembly too. So this is very simple explanation. So if you want to more know more details, you can easily find other papers. But this paper, the, the algorithm, the paper about algorithm published like a long, long time ago. So it's just recently being applied to uh, NGS genome assembly. Okay. So there are some assemblers using this different kind of algorithms like uh, Clara assembler. But I think Clara up updated uh, algorithms and it's CAP and uh, different uh, tools we can use. But we are not using these two uh, the algorithms from the first uh, now because it's not very efficient for the large amount of data. And the DBG method there are the popular tools like a Velvet, IBS, or Pass, Soft De Novo, Discover. Basically, all the popular assemblers are heard of. They are probably using these algorithms. Okay, so for for the long reads, it's going to be a little bit different. It's still a graph algorithm, but with attention to error corrections because we know those long reads tend to have a lot of errors. If you take them as it is, going to have Gonna create a lot of errors for you on the on the assembly too. So there are some popular tools like Canoe or Fly E. Like uh, they are those are pretty good ones like a Mini Assembly, or Mini Polish, and Raven. All those things they are good for the small genomes. But Canoe and Fly e can deal with the big genomes. Uh, for pack bio data, there are some tools only work on pack bio like HGAP. Falcon is developed by pack bio company. And if you have high, if you have both, like if you have short read and long read, 
So you can use some hybrid assemblers like uh, MASURCA, <laughs> Unicycler, those tools. So those are nice tools. And I personally have tried Canoe and Fly E and MASURCA and Unicycler. So they, the same with those tools is they need to take into account error correction. So they, during the processing, they need to use a lot of memories. And uh, I was running one project with, I think the genome size is like a human genome size, like three or four GB. I was running a canoe. It took almost a month, something like that to finish. So then I tried FLY Fly E and it's much faster. And I compare those assemblies. So canoe actually give you better results. You see a longer assemblies. Fly E give you short, um, short a context of the pattern. Finish much faster and take less resources for fly E. And so it's something to take, to take into account when you're trying to pick up a tool for your, for your long read assembly. And uh, here's the, some stats from the paper. Uh, you can see the paper, uh, you can see a uh, URL here. So people comparing different tools, canoe, fly E, mini SM, and they give you stats incomplete a complete chromosome and fully complete. So Fly E actually here has a pretty good result. So yeah, if you want to try Fly E, I would, yeah, it's it's a good one compare uh, according to some um, papers. But in my in my particular project, I find Canoe a little bit better. So I think probably it depends on the uh, the genomes maybe which genome has a lot of repeats or something like that. Uh, here's another comparison from the same paper. So basically the same, uh, it's, it's almost just telling you uh, identical, the percentage of identical, the maximum RAM used. Hey, here, Canoe used less memory than Fly E. So it's, yeah, I think somehow it depends on the genome and the genome size. And for, for sure, Canoe take a lot, lot of time to finish because my, it's the same as my um, old project. And fly E pretty fast, but not as fast as just uh, the media sample something. Okay, so that is for genome assembly, and we know it's very difficult, but uh, it's still uh, possible to finish. And for transcriptome assembly, it's much easier, and uh, there are a lot of popular tools like Subgenome Transcriptome and Velvet Trinity. So Trinity is, uh, I think, it's probably the most popular one. And uh, it's not only just a, a transcriptome assembly tool. So once you have finished the transcriptome assembly, you want to know the functions for them. You want to, you want to have the open reading frame predicted. So Trinity has, uh, has a tool for that, doing that too. It can annotate the, even annotate the possible molecular function for you. So we, yeah, we will be, we'll be running a small Trinity assembly on, on today with the Galaxy. Okay, so once you have the assembly uh, finished, you want to check how good is the assembly. So for genome assembly, you want to know the context size or how many contexts generated. Let's say, for example, if I'm trying to assemble, if I'm trying to assemble human genome, I know how many chromosomes you have. So if 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 the assembly give you exact number of uh, chromosomes, that'd be perfect. But most of the cases, it won't be like that. You'll get a lot of you're much more than the chromosome numbers. So. So we will say those are like contexts before they were put into a chromosome format. So it's how we say the context. And what is the largest context? What's the total length? What is N50? So N50 is like, uh, if you sort the length of the context from the, uh, from the shortest to the longest, so what is the one in the middle? So that is N50. Another thing to take into account, like misassemblies and structure variations. So if you have a different genome, for example, if you are working with human, you have a reference genome, so you can compare your assembly to the uh, reference genome to see, you know, misassemblies, uh, misassembled context, all those things. Okay, so like uh, some other things like genome fraction. So how, what is the percentage of genome are covered by your assembly? So what duplication ratio, or GC content, variation per KB. So variation per KB is more like a, uh, the arrows from the sequencing or from some other reasons. And number of genes covered, yes. So genes are the most important thing in the genome. So when, you're, when you have a new genome assembled, you want, to, you want to annotate the genes. 
It's not just that you finish the assembly, so it's hand over, say, hey, this is assembly. So you need to figure out where are the genes. This is gene. So you want to know how many genes are covered from the assembly. If you have a different gene already, you can comp easily compare. So I have seen papers say uh, resequencing something and give a better reference something. So when you say you have a better assembly or better reference, you need to report all those things. How many genes are covered? Did you get some new genes? And what is the N50? What is the total length or something? So there are tools available for that, like a Quest or Cage. And uh, Quest, I think, is also a version for transcriptome too. So for the transcriptome assembly, and uh, when we have finished assembly, we want to see how many, uh, how many of those INC data are present in your assembly. So it should have like more than 90%. Uh, the, 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 the full length genes, so how many of them are there? But we don't, if you don't have different genome or something like that, but it's okay, we still, let's say if you are working on species, certain species, there are species specific, like species conserved genes. So we can take a look at only those conserved genes and figure out what is uh, how many are full length, how many are fragmented, how many are complete. So. Uh, like that. I'm going to calculate E90 and 50 or the d score. So yeah, those are just some way to estimate uh, how good assemblies are. So like the, for example here, the E90 and 50. So basically you are trying to trying to take, let's say you have a data set here. You, uh, you try to take a small amount of data and try to run, training, uh, run the de novo assembly and see what is N50 for, for that assembly? And you increase the amount. So let's say take 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%. So you, you, you're trying to see, the purpose is to see if you have enough data, okay? Let's say if you have, if you take 80% of the data and you already achieve, you already have the N50 similar to 1%. So basically you're saying your 80%, you're, you have enough of data, right? You have more than enough of data. And the denotate score is, is produced by the tool to denotate. Uh, you can, yeah. So it's one of the way to estimate how good the assemblies are. It gave you a score based on the mis um, the, the misalignment, um, all those things, the chimeric, all those things. And the recovery rate of the conserved genes. So that's one thing we talked about before. So there are tools for doing that too, like uh, Busco is one popular one. It gives you a statistic about the full length genes covered, conserved genes, how many, what's the percentage. And iron quest is a popular one. And detonate, translate. And I think I think on HPSC we have Busco and we have detonate. So a, a way to find out the tools on HPSC, I hope you still remember, it's gonna be module spider. I say I want to see if both Busco is available on HPSC, I just run module space spider space busco so you're gonna give you're gonna give me a list if any busco installed there okay yeah this is something like uh something like uh, if you have a uh, transcript assembly if you're gonna see transcript you have multiple copies and probably give you one copy and you have a chim chimeric you, know, you basically you put like a gene confusion you put gene uh, two genes together and give out one so you're like, supposed to be two genes and you have, uh, uh, you have, uh, you reported the insert there, but no insert in the original transcript. So it's like, it's a fake, it's a wrong insertion. Incompetence, you know, it's supposed to be this long, but the assembly is really short. Fragmentation, so it's, I mean, those are yet to understand. So those are all uh, taken into account by the tool, for example, the uh, detonate. So it give you a score, tell you how good your assemblies are. Oh, this is one thing I mentioned before. It's the E90 and 50. So if you have a small, if you, have, if you don't have enough data, for example, the, 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 the red one, you won't see a peak like you see on the purple line. So that is what you want to see, like the purple line. So you have like 80%, you got a peak and you get more data, you basically just get more noise or something. Okay, so uh, there's another assembly called metagenomics assembly. 
So this is what this method genome assembly is even harder than the gen single genome or transcript assembly, because when you do metagenomic analysis, you do whole genomes, whole genome sequencing for metagenomic samples, you have like thousands of individuals mixed there and different species. And when you sequence them, they just you just report it as one sample. There's no way to separate those thousands, thousands of samples, thousands of individuals or different species. So you are trying to get assembly from those samples. It's really, really um, very it's really difficult. So still, uh, there's some tools for you to do that. I think uh, like a meta Velt, Velt is one of the tools for the assembly, a meta space, a mega heat. So uh, I have never, I have never tried to try and run this meta genome, genome assembly. I think it's really, the idea to do that's kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, how can you assemble a thousand genomes at once? So I think it's a very difficult task. But it was to try. Uh, my guess is when you have some conserved regions, you're gonna be captured. I mean, conserved like a bit conserved among species. Those regions can be easily assembled. Okay, so those are very brief introduction, and uh, and uh, we today we're gonna do two practice. So we're gonna run. Uh, uh, e. coli genome assembly with PACWAT data. I'm going to be a command line uh, on ADA. So we're using, using CANU. I'm going to run another small transcript assembly with the, uh, the Galaxy. So it's a BDF, same Galaxy we were using last, in the last course. Okay, so if you have, I'm, I, I'm sure because this is the last course of NGS, I'm sure you're probably already familiar with SSH or any like I said, any of those tools you can use to log in to HPRC. So this is a way basically just say SSH, that ID and ada.tombit.addu. So if you're using Windows, get to like a mobile X term, it's very convenient for you to, uh, to do that. Okay, any questions? Yeah, okay, so yeah, if you have more questions or after the class, you can send emails to HPSC help help at hps.tem.edu or give us give us a call and just gonna happy to help you. Okay, so let's try try to run this pack bio data assembly and I have the materials prepared here. Maybe I should put this one in the chat. So everyone can see it. So just click on the link. Oops, where is my window? Okay, so we're gonna do a uh, assembly tutorial with packbar data using canoe. So first let's log into Ada first. For me, I'll be using a terminal. So let me make it bigger. Where's my cell phone? Okay, I need to get this my cell phone.
Okay, I'm back. Yes. So okay, once you log into the to the ADA system, uh, so we're gonna have everything stored in the scratch. If you do echo scratch, for me it's gonna be scratch user, my username. For you it will be uh, different, your username will be different. So we're gonna change to this, change to this scratch folder. So look at PWD and I'm, I'm in the scratch folder. Okay, so we're gonna make two directories. One is called uh, pack bio assembly, but it's gonna be under NGS assembly long read pack bio assembly. Then make another one NGS assembly long read pack bio data. So we're gonna store the data in pack bio data and we're gonna generate assembly in pack bio assembly. So it's gonna be separated. Okay, actually we can just copy paste in all those three lines. Okay, and hit enter. PWD. So now we are in uh, scratch user, my name, and GS assembly, long read, pack bar data. All right, okay. So I, we got nothing here yet. Oh, we do have, oh, this is my old data set. So I'm gonna delete it because I tried it before. So now we got nothing here. It's supposed to be nothing because we just created this folder. And uh, what we need just to get the data, the data is available in this uh, Gmbox umd.edu. So they provide this link. I'm just gonna download and copy this one. Should be pretty fast. Okay, finished. So now I've got a file called petbio.fsq. And actually let's take a look at this file. We're gonna use a command called head because the file gonna be a lot, of, the file gonna be really big and gonna generate a lot of, if you just say cat or more, it's fine too. So let's use this head and see. So because the read is really, uh, really long, so it's still faster queue. The first line gonna be the read name and with some information about the machines or all those runs. The second one be the real sequence. But see this one, this read is really long. So it has a lot, probably a couple hundred um, base pair. So, okay. So that's still, we know still faster queue and it looks like it's still faster queue. <laughs> So now we have the data. So we're gonna be running canoe. So canoe, you know, some tools like some tools for long read assembly will require you to uh, to do error correction first before you can feed the data to this assembler. But for canoe, it's asking for the raw data. You're gonna do the error correction within this assembler tool. So uh, if you want, you can check on the more details about this how to run this run this tool on this HTTPS web page. And so for now, we can just say module spider canoe and see what version we can use. Ooh, take a little bit. So I'm trying to see what versions of this tool canoe available on HPRC. But it's gonna take a while, it's maybe because the module is trying to build to to build a cache for the database. So if I do it again, it's supposed to be really fast because it's already updated the database, the cache. Come on. Okay, see, it's much faster now. So we, what we can see here, we have canoe 1.5, canoe 1.7, 1.8, so 2.0. Um, I think the, yes, it's recommended to use the latest version if it's working. Most of the cases like that. 
But if you have a script written before, like use an older version, it's okay. I mean, but it's always good to use the latest version. So here, this one, uh, when I prepare this, it has 1.7, so I'm still using 1.7. Uh, okay, so we know now we know Canoe is available on HPIC, and what we need just to uh, create a, a job file for some submitting his job. So you don't want to run Canoe on the head nodes. Uh, can really, a uh, Dino assembler take a lot of time and take a take a lot of resources to finish. So we're gonna prepare a we call it B sub file or job scheduling file. So we can submit to a job scheduling system. So to do that, at first switch to the uh, pack bio assembly folder because we want to we want to have all the output of canoe being stored in pack bio assembly folder. So let's move to that folder using this command cd. Okay. And for L, oh man, I got a lot of things here. Let's just remove all of everything. Okay, now it's clear. I got nothing. You, your folder is supposed to be empty like this too. So, okay. So to prepare a file, we just need to create a text file to prepare a job scheduling file. So let's, let's use the tool called nano. So we nano run canoe.bsup. Ew, what's this? Whatever. Hey. I don't know what's happening on my terminal, so it's giving me all those. <laughs> okay, I think easier way probably is restart. Hey, it's funny. No, I don't know exactly what happened here. Okay, let's get a new terminal. This is the evil one. Let's clear it. Kill it. Okay, I have to uh, log in again. Okay, so on the chat, the same, sorry, saying same message here on my portal. So, okay, that means might be something, might be something like this? No, no way. So I don't know what exactly happened. So just uh, easy way, you just quit and re-login. So I just re-login and it seems fine to me. Okay, so I have already downloaded everything, so I don't restart. I just need to go to this folder, switch to this folder, and LS, you got nothing there. So if you have the same mess, same thing on the screen, just like what you saw on my screen, uh, you can probably uh, quit that session and then re-log in. So because we already did downloading and everything, so you don't have to, uh, Download those data. You can just uh, switch to the PyBar assembly folder with this command, and we're gonna prepare this nano. Let's see, it's because of the command? No way. Nano run can locate this. Okay, so now it's normal. You see, everything is normal. So, so here, when you have this nano thing open, we need to add something here. Actually, you can just type in whatever you like here. So, this is a text editor. It's uh, pretty easy to use text editor. So um, we're gonna need to put all those things in this file. But before we copy paste, let's read through these files, uh, read this line, see what they are doing. So basically, those anything start with shop B sub is those are parameters. Those are parameters for a job. So I'm saying we're using bash and the job name gonna be canoe run 
and the standard output will be standard out dot job ID. The standard arrow will be standard arrow dot job ID. I'm asking for 20 CPUs and uh, I want them in one node. P, the type P tau equal 20, basically so 20 divided by 20 will be one. So I'm asking for 20 CPUs on one node. So if I if I change this one span P tau equal 10, so I'm asking for two nodes, each node is 10 CPUs. But for, for canoe, it's better to, um, I call it grid computing. So we have, you need to provide different parameters. So it's not, you're not supposed to do that. And we're gonna be using 20 CPU and in one node. And the memory, so it's gonna be 2000 MB per node, uh, per, per CPU. So it's 20, 40 uh, GB in total from one node. And W is the war time, gonna be, we're asking for four hours. Okay, so we're gonna load some modules. I think, uh, I'm not sure if you actually need to load this Vestamir module, because I'm not gonna be using the, those really big nodes. So, but for sure we need to load the canoe module. And uh, so this is the way to load it. And we can set up the output directory called out underscore dr equals list. So this is the directory we are in now. And the input directory. So input directory is going to be list pack value data and date. So basically going to print the date, the time, and on the screen. And echo start going to print the start on the screen. So just give us a message. So the job is going to start and when it's going to start it. So here is a command for running canoe. So canoe-p, basically I'll give you a project name or something, dash d. It's the output directory, and you, you're gonna give an estimated genome size. It does not to be exact, so just estimate it will be fine. And you say it's pack bio raw data, you have, and form this input directory and then slash pack bio dot queue. And use grid, and say false. Okay, we are not be using grid this time. And when this is done, and you can print out the date and echo finished. So you know how long this job took, right? You, you're gonna see the message say the time and the date when it start and the time and date when it's finished. Okay, so let's copy paste, copy all the things and paste here. Once you paste here, you say control X on the X called exit. Control X is gonna ask you, do you want to save? Say yes, type in Y. And the file name to write is the same file name. I just hit enter. Okay. So now if you else again, you're gonna see a uh, run canoe.bsub. If you use the command called more run canoe.bsub, you're gonna see the content of the file. So just to double check and make sure it's what you wanted. And it looks like fine. Okay, so this is how you prepare a uh, job, job file to submit to the job scheduling system. So if you make, if you're sure everything's correct in your job file, you can use this command to submit called bsub uh, with the uh, smaller than sign and run canoe.bsub file. Okay, can hit enter, supposed to submit. Let's see. Okay, so it gives a message on the screen saying job is submitted to default queue as and regular. So it's fine, it's been, it's already been uh, submitted. Let's check the status B jobs. So I have, in my case, I have one job and it's sitting in the queue. It's, it's the status, the stats here, it's called pending, so it's pending. Uh, someone's asking why use module little Vestamir? So some modules will, some tools will need this Vestamir, but I don't think in this case, my uh, my this canoe job gonna need a rest of meal. It was something old I left over left there. But but yes, check if you are running some jobs gonna be using some big nodes, those nodes with one terabyte, two terabyte memories, you probably will need this rest of meal package. So in my in our case, we don't really need it. But it's just something left over. You can delete it. I don't think it's gonna affect anything. It's only for okay, again, it's only for running jobs on those big nodes. By saying big nodes, I mean those nodes with one terabyte, one thousand GB or two thousand GB memories. If your job requires that many memory, you're gonna be need those nodes, and you probably will need that that package. 
Okay, to try B jobs again. Okay, so it's running. It's supposed to be finished fast, but let's just let it running. I think it's gonna take 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, so before we check, get, get back to check results, we're gonna uh, let it run and we're gonna run some transcriptome assembly on Galaxy. So we have this Galaxy. I'm gonna put the link on the chat. And uh, yeah, that's logging to that Galaxy and trying to, to run a de novo assembly there. Whoops. Okay, gonna ask you logging. Send me a push. Yes. Okay, so yeah, we were using this Galaxy for previous iron six data analysis class. So I have some history left over here. If you are first time using this Galaxy, you're supposed to see nothing. Okay, I'm gonna create a new history. Users histories. Okay, I'm gonna choose this unnamed history. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna pause a little bit here. So just for everyone to to finish the previous uh, canoe job. No, submitting canoe job. We don't want. Then we go to this transcription uh, transcription assembly on Galaxy. So if you have done the canoe and you are on, you are moving to Galaxy now. You can probably click on the yes on the on the screen. So let me know you are moving to Galaxy. So when I see most of the people are there, we're gonna I'm gonna start Galaxy. Okay, before I do that, I probably need to share all those with you. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure I'm just sharing a data set with you so you can import to your history to start running some uh, analysis. Oh. I wish I can select more. Okay, I believe we got everyone. Okay, so there's a, there's a question here saying, can you please tell how to see the, the data again? Uh, you mean the data on Ada on the, on the terminal? So for that, you just need to, if you do TWD, you're gonna see this, you are in hack file assembly here. So you can go to up level with cd dot dot slash, we're going to up level. And as again, you see two folders. One is PackPal assembly, one is PackPal data. So if you want to see the data, you go to CD PackPal data. So if your PWD is a print working directory, it's gonna show you where you are now. You are in uh, screen user and just a little on read PackPal data. So, and you can LS, you're gonna see the data. PackPal.fastq, you wanna see a content of the file, 
you use the more tagbar.fsq, hit enter, you can see a content, just like a list. I see a lot of them screen. To create this screen, push Q button, yeah, you're out. You're out of this screen, <laughs> not you. Okay. Okay, so I shared the data with you. Now, what you can do, you can go to um, history, users history, and pick the one of them. I just create a new one, so it's, it's no name. I can name it, I say, assembly. name assembly so can you see for this data now So share data, uh, data libraries. Can you see the data libraries? Yes, okay. So we're gonna run a uh, I transcript on INSEQ. So we're gonna click on this one and uh, in export to history as data set. Okay, click on this. You can export both, but we just need one. We just need the transcript on INSEQ data. We're gonna run a transcript assembly on Galaxy. So just need one file, click on the export to history as data set. And I'm gonna export to this assembly history I just created. So, or you can create a new one, doesn't matter. So it just, and click import. Okay, so I still have, I should have this file, E. coli transcript on INSIC, something, dot faster queue in my assembly uh, history, okay. So everyone got the data? Yeah. So this is a FastQ file. If you click on the I, the eyeball icon, <laughs> you can see like this. So it's short read from for I six data. So now, um, so we are trying to uh, to do assembly, right? Assembly. So that's important when you do assembly. You want to trim trim off the uh, first trim off the adapters. There could be some adapter leftovers in the data. Second, you want to trim on the low quality basis. So those could give you arrows in the assembly. So let's, uh, before we do uh, trim, let's try to check the quality first. You're gonna use a tool called Fast QC. So if you're having attending uh, previous course, you know the Fast QC tool. Just type in Fast QC on the left panel here, and you're gonna pop up to you. And click on the Fast QC. I'm gonna select this read. There's only one file and a contamination list that we don't have it, we don't have to provide it. Adapter list, we don't have it. So we're gonna use some building, I, I think it's, in this case, it should have some building, um, nope, available. Yeah, oh, so sorry, I was thinking of trim matic So this faster QC, it has building, uh, adapter sequence, everything there. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I'll probably go too fast. Sorry. Sorry about that. So I will just, uh, before I go further, I want to make sure everyone got the data. If you haven't, you can push a no button so I can see it. I'm gonna wait a little bit.
Okay, let me go through how to get the data first. So once you log into Galaxy, Okay, so let me go through the how to get the data on Galaxy first. So once you log into Galaxy, you have this, you probably have a uh, interface here, but ignore all the everything else. Just click on the share data and data libraries. Okay, so there is, you should see two things. One is E. coli, another one is INSIG data. Uh, let's click on the E. coli. And you see two files. We're gonna use. We're gonna be using the E. coli transcriptome INC data. So click on that file. And then, on the top, it has a button called Export to History as Dataset. Click on the As Dataset. Okay. So you can export uh, import this one into a pre-existing history or create a new one. Let's say I pretend I don't have anything. I create a new one. Say, I seek assemble assembly twenty twenty. Okay, I'm gonna click on import. So now this file should go into my I seek assembly twenty twenty, right? So now we need to switch that to that history. Click on the users and histories, and you will see the history you just created for my INSIG assembly 2020. I click on it. So now I'm here. Okay, all good. You, okay, it's, the students have to say you don't have the files in the shared folder. I mean, you mean the shared data? Okay, let me see if I actually share with you because I suppose share with everyone. No. So everyone is I supposed to share already. If I, if you have an account on this Galaxy, I think I share with you already. If you don't have, that's weird. Okay, so you see it? Oneda? Yes, okay, good. Yes, share data, data libraries. E. coli, E. coli I and seek. Then export to, export to history, okay. Okay, great. So if you see this file and you can import that file into your history, you're good. You're good to start. So this is a faster queue file and as we talked before, when it's assembly, the adapters are gonna cause troubles, the low quality base is gonna cause troubles. So we want to trim those. But before we do trimming, maybe it's good to, to check it, right? Make sure we actually, uh, we want to see what's the problem in our data. So let's use faster QC. Uh, just on the left panel here, you type in faster QC, hit enter, then it'll pop up and click on the fast QC read quality reports. Okay. The first one, short read data from your current history. Yes, so if we only have one file, just pick that one. This is a small file and we don't really need to change anything else. Just hit execute. Okay, so take just a few seconds. Okay, so my job finished. So if your job finished too, you can click on the web page, click on the eyeball count icon. Okay, click on the eyeball view data icon so you can see this web page. And uh, yeah, it give you a quality 
this looks good. We don't have really, we don't have that many uh, local databases. Do we have adapter content? We don't really have adapter um, that much leftovers. And over percent sequence, there's something from the adapter index, choosing adapter, illumina multiplexing, PCR primers. So yes, we do have something we need to trim. Sequence length distribution is fine. Per G C per base sequence content is fine. Some uh, low complexity on the beginning. It might be from some like sequencing. Oh wow, this one has a lot of A's. Yeah, it's a poly A probably it's tail. Okay, so now we see it looks like this. Uh, sometimes we see low quality bases drop at the end of the read, so we need to uh, trim those off. Sometimes we see a lot of adapters. Uh, we need to remove those too. But in this case, it looks like uh, it's okay. But anyway, so I mean, it's a standard procedure. We do quality trimming or quality control. Okay, so we're going to be using a tool called Trimmatic. Yeah, it's the same tool we used uh, in the previous class Trimmatic. Okay, Trimmatic. T R R M. M O, I just type it out so it can pop out to me. Okay, so single end or pair end? If you click on the trim uh tool, gonna, first question is single end or pair end. So for us, it's single end, and the input fast queue is we only have one fast queue, so it's nothing else. Uh, prefer illum initial luminous clips, so yes. And uh, standard adapter sequence, we can be using standard. I don't know. So uh, it's, again, it's the same. So it's the same as last time. Because this is the data set, um, pretty old data set. When you get the data back from the sequencing facility, you should know how your library was, how your library was prepared, how sequencing was done. So what basically it's saying which machine and which kit was used for, for your sequencing. So it, then you can choose accordingly based on your own project, right? Let's say if your a uh, sequence was done on two six three kit with single ended my seek and high seek. You know, check, pick this one. So, so the trimmatic gonna have some uh, based on this kit you picked and use adapter sequence to 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 remove those in the adapt uh, in in your reads. So those parts are important. Basically, you don't you don't want to keep adapters there. So, adapter gonna uh, create a fake link between uh, reads. And other things, you can leave them as they are. And those, yeah, leave them as they are, like how many cores, how many memories. I mean, it doesn't really matter the whole. Here is the sliding window approach. We can keep it as, as they are, like four basis window and average quarter 20. So it's fine. Okay. Then job resources and parameters. Those are fine too, because those are small files. When you have a real data, uh, have a lot of files, have a really uh, deep sequencing, you're gonna need to consider increase this one. Now one core, two GB will not be enough for you. You probably need the 28 cores. You probably need the 14 cores. So, okay. So for this, for our uh, tutorial, this one core, four GB memory is good enough, uh, two GB is good enough. So we're gonna click on execute. We're gonna run Trimomatic. Okay, it's finished pretty fast. And click on the view data, the eye, the eyeball icon. And you're gonna see the reads being trimmed. Some reads are getting really short, really short, really short. But overall, this is, uh, uh, this data set is kind of old data set. You can, by looking at the real lens, you know they are pretty uh, old uh, sequencing data. The new sequencing technology probably give you at least um, 150, uh, 150 base pair pair end. So but for practicing, it's okay. Okay, great. So we have this data, Q seed. So we know it's supposed to be no adapter leftovers, supposed to be no low quality. 
basis left in the reads. So we are confident the quality of the reads are good, then we, we can move to the next step. So basically, next step of the Trinity. Trinity is a de novo sampler for unstick data, and it's kind of easy to use, and you don't have to adjust too many parameters. So are you pulling, like if you look at the parameters, say first one is, are you pulling sequence data set? We only have one data set, whatever, yes or no. So pair and single end. A single end, I'm gonna pick one. It's the traumatic output. So we're gonna pick the data set four. Strength specific. Okay, so here's the, yes, you need to specify strength specific. When your library means, when you prepare libraries, you, you can tell the facility what you want. You want the strength specific or just regular. So if it's strength specific, say yes. Otherwise, it's no. Run in cynical normalization of the reads. Well, this is not uh, really important. So we're going to say no. Any advanced parameters? So basically, say minimum contact lens, I will leave as default. Some, sometimes people increase this one to 500 when they are doing uh, like uh, genome assembly. But for this transcription, we can leave it at 200. Use genome guided mode. Do we have a genome? So if you have a genome, you can use genome guided mode. So if you click yes, you're gonna ask you for the for the for the alignment file. Because when you have reference genome, you can align, you can map the iron secret rate to reference genome to produce a band file, a SAM file. But in our case, uh, we don't have one. So uh, we actually, if you want to do this one, yes, you need to look uh, load the E. coli reference genome, then map the read to E. coli reference to produce a BAM, so you can use it here. But in our case, it's gonna be saying no. And do we have error correction or CCS pack boundaries? We don't have it, so it's okay. Minimum count for camera to be assembled, because this is a, this is a test data set, and we're gonna have, we're gonna use a small number here. So Java resources. Job resources parameters. So again, this is the test data. I'm gonna use keep those keep using the small resources request, one core, two GB memory. So when you have a real data, you probably need to increase it to more, more cores and more memories. Okay. So execute. This probably take a few minutes. So uh, if you still have the ADA, the terminal open, remember we submit a job for the de novo assembly, for transcript de novo assembly for pack bio data. So now it's time we can check say B jobs. Oh man, it's still running. So if you go up dot dot slash and LS, you're gonna see two folders. Let's go to in this assembly folder. Let's see what it produced. So it's produced a lot of files. It creates so many, uh, one, two, three, four, a lot of folders. And if we want to see the status of this, and like uh, we know the, when we submit the job, we say the standard arrow message can be in this file. So let's take a look. You use more. So basically you can up, output the steps of canoe on, on this. So how many CPUs, detect 20 CPUs, 63 G memories genome size, so those are informations just telling you how uh, Canoe is running now, what is what step is working on. I mean, it's hard for you, for you just to read those information because unless it is an arrow, it's just for you, it just not make sense. So, but it looks like it's on the fifth step building consensus, so it's good. I think they only have seven steps or something. Already fin almost finished. Yeah. Okay. So it's not done yet, but uh, yeah, still running. And when it's done, it's gonna produce E. coli dot uh, context or fast start for you. You can see the tail. 
Yeah, so if you look at this std out dot the job ID file, you're gonna see the date is started and date and gonna start. So when it's finished, you're supposed to see the end and the date, the time and the date. So, okay, let's go back to this. Oh man, this one is also running. So when it's running, usually so de novo assembly is really time consuming and uh, and it depends on the genome size. It can take from days to weeks to months to finish. <laughs> so, um, I hope this Trinity assembly can finish soon. But I can, if you have any questions, you can put on chat. So right now we just waiting for the job to finish. Uh, question is, do we have access to this video in case we would like to come back? I think, uh, yes, on on YouTube probably, as a SPRC channel, and that's a place we post videos there. But we're gonna take some time to, for us to upload and everything. So you probably won't see it right after this class, but uh, yes, check back maybe in a week or so. I'm not sure how long it will take, but it's, it take uh, a little bit of time. Okay, so if you want, just want to see the output, we don't have to wait because I have, I run previously with the same data set. And uh, it basically is the same thing, but let me see if it finished. Oh man, still running. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yeah, still running. Wow, it's pretty slow. Much slower than I thought. So basically, so basically when we finish the assembly, so uh, let me take, let me uh, show you the 
history from a previous run. So we do the same thing here, faster Q and run faster QC. You see the faster QC uh, here, if you can see my mouse. Okay, let me see. I need to refresh it. Oh man, still running. Okay, so basically after we finish Trinity, what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a, a estimation, we're gonna run to a called Busco to estimate how good the, how good assemblies are. So, uh, I'm going to show you the result from my previous history, so we don't have to wait for this to finish. Let's take a longer time than I thought. And okay, so yeah, last time I also imported the FNA file. It, it is the uh, reference genome. If I click on the eyeball, so this is the reference genome for E. coli. It's for for 4.8 4, 4 MB. So if we have this reference genome as we did before, yeah, okay. So Michael sent a message on chat saying, uh, the Trinity job is taking longer time. It could, could be because the resource selector is not working properly. And if you select more than one core, it still give you one core. So it's probably a reason, but actually I'm, I'm asking for one core. So <laughs> maybe that's why it's so slow. But anyway, so I'm, let me just keep explaining on this, the old run I had done before. So we have the faster Q file, we run faster QC. Then we just, just to check the quality and adapt to those things. So once, once we're done, we run trimmatic. So we have trimmatic done. And, and to double check, last time I, could, I rerun FastQC again, but this time I didn't, I didn't run FastQC. I mean, you can run FastQC anytime you want. So because I see the quality are good and we don't see a lot of adapters, so there's nothing else to see. It won't change very much. So after this trimmatic step, I'm gonna to go to a Trinity. So we're gonna run Trinity. And so this is a step when we have, uh, when we run Trinity without the reference guide. Remember when we click on the Trinity, it asks you, do you have a reference guide? If you say yes, you have to provide a band file, right? So this step has no reference guided. But so when it's done, It'll give you this file called assembled transcript. You're gonna see a transcript and it's in faster format and it's gonna start like a list. Trinity is something G1, I1, G1, I1, G1, I1, C1. So it's assembly. And if you want to run assembly based on the, based on the reference guide, so you will need to map the Einstein data to reference genome. So we do have reference genome in the shared data set if you want to try that. So shared data set E. coli. So one is the INSIG data. It's the, the first one is actually the FASTA file. This is for the reference, it's E. coli reference genome. So, oh man, coming back to the old history. Yeah, there's some issue with scalacy in the, in switching history. So sometimes it's gonna bring you back to the old histories. To, to, to switch some history, you have to do user histories and click on the history you want. Say I want this E. coli trinity. So it's gonna give me those. Okay. So once the assembly is done, either it's based on the reference guided or not, 
when we have reference uh, uh, annotate, uh, sorry, uh, assembly is done, we're gonna use Busco. We're gonna use the Busco to test, see how it's good, um, how assembly is good. So here's the output of the one of the Busco, and you have the, so it's based on the bacteria database, and gonna tell you how many genes are complete, and how many genes are complete single copy, complete duplicated, fragmented, and missing. Okay, total group search. And you have this number here. Complete 41%, complete and single copy, complete and duplicate. So those plus together are supposed to be complete. And fragmented 12%, missing 45%. So we have uh, almost like half of the genes are missing in the assembly. Oh, so this, that means it's not really good because this is a small genome, it's supposed to capture all of the genes there. The reason we have this high missing for this data set, because this is a toy data set. I just, uh, I just uh, pick like a, probably 10% of the original data and make it smaller so we can run faster. Okay, so this is gonna be the output from Busco and give you some idea how good the assemblies are. From this transcription assembly, it's not really good. The reason is because we have a very small input data. So, yeah, so basically, as all for this practice on Trinity, it looks like it's gonna take a long time to finish, but yeah, but this galaxy gonna be running for a while, so you can come back and check and you can run Busco. So let me show you how to run Busco on this. So yeah, on the tools, it's the same to type in Busco, and you're gonna pop, your, pop out this tool and just tool Busco. Click on this one. Basically, just select the trans, assemble the transcript and just like one you want to check and it's transcriptome or genome so it's transcriptome and it's bacterial it's going to select a bacterial that's like this one because this this is about determining which database was going to be using advanced so we're going to keep those as those 0.01 it's not very strict but it's okay how many candidates you need to consider three august special model yeah, so you're gonna be using default unless you want to build your own. So by all those things, um, just to, just for a quick estimation, you can use keep the default parameters, it's no problem. So the Augustus is a tool for uh, de novo assembly. Uh, so we're gonna produce some models for different uh, species or lineages. So we will not be gonna be using the default one, the pre-built one and job resources. So you can pick how many cores and how many CPUs and click execute. And uh, I think that's all the things we need to cover for today. And let's go back to the history to see if it's finished. If it's finished, you can actually run the Busco. If it's not, I don't know how long it's gonna take. And so we, we're gonna encourage you, encourage you to come back later to check on the uh, check on the assembly. How about this one? How about this pack bio? Okay, great. So we see a pack bio actually finished, and uh, if you go to this folder, it's long read pack bio assembly folder and ls. You're gonna see a lot of files. But remember the command you run, I check this command run. So you say dash P E coli. So the final output will be like E coli dot something dot faster. So, so we have E uh, coli context dot faster, E coli unit, unitics, like a unit context dot faster, example, uh, ensemble faster. Let's look, look at this unitic cup first. Yeah, so let's give you a genome. I don't know how many. Um, let's see how many contacts it give us. Oh, it's give us one contact. Oh yeah, it's actually a pretty good one. So one contact and the length is 4.6 MB. The single assembly, it's give a single assembly with 4.6 4. MB. So it's almost covered whole 
genome of E. coli. So you see the power of a long read assembly. It actually can give you a whole genome scale assembly if the genome is not big, of course. <laughs> I mean, 4.6 MB is really small. Sometimes like the rice genome is small, but it's already 300 MB or something. Okay, so we successfully finished this pack bio assembly with, uh, for the E. coli genome. And the output is pretty good. It's only single contact, unique contact. And the length is 4.6 MB compared to the whole genome 4.8 MB. So it's not bad. And next thing you can probably compare the sequence to the reference uh, E. coli uh, e. coli genome and see if any variations there, like uh, insertion, deletion, or single nucleotide polymorphisms. So any variations there, you're gonna those can be your stats. So we can we can use a tool called Quest, Q U A S T to do the, all those things. Okay. Assembly is pretty hard and see, I mean, for E. coli it's easy and once we have a genome, you want to know where are those genes right, in this genome. So it's gonna be gene annotation. And gene annotation can be hard too. You need to have, uh, you need to do two things. First, it's gonna be de novo gene annotation and evidence-based. So for evidence-based, you need to have INSIG data, maybe from different tissue or different develop developmental stages just to cover as many genes as possible. So you see, for, to, for a, let's say you, want to, you have a new species you want to assemble, you want to build a reference genome, it's a lot of work. First, you know, assembly is hard. Gene notation gonna require a lot of data and it's not that easy. Sometimes it require manual gene correction or those things. So it take a really long time. Usually it's gonna be, it, we're not gonna be a single group, a single, even single university to finish a, whole, a, a, a genome reference. You take multiple universities, multiple groups from multiple countries to, to have a perfect, uh, to have a good reference genome finished. So anyway, so today you can see a few things about genome assembly, transcriptome assembly, and we try a little bit on HPRC. So if you have a real big data for, for a pack bio or a long read, you can try it on HPRC. We have a lot of we have a lot of resources. We have really big nodes with one thousand GB and two thousand GB memories. So those, those are really good for for the novel assembly of those long read data. And we have Galaxy. If you have a small project like INC assembly or those things, you can use Galaxy. Just easier for you to to manage the data to show the results, and so you don't have to remember all the parameters. All the parameters are already in Galaxy, right? You can click anything. If I click on this one, click on this, run this job again, you're gonna bring up all the previous parameters you used. So you have everything here. So, any questions so far? Yeah, if you have any questions, you're welcome to send an email to us, help at hprc.tamu.edu and Especially so for the Galaxy, you can send an email. Yeah, you can send email to that email uh, address too. But if Michael Dickens is the one who actually behind installing everything and optimize everything for this Galaxy. So if you have more questions, you can send email to uh, Michael too. I'm sure he'll be happy to help you. So with that, I think uh, I covered all the contents for today. And my job on Galaxy is still running. <laughs> and if your job is still running too, just come back later to check on it. It can take a couple hours because some issue with the job scheduler maybe. The resource is not correct. So anyway, so thank you very much for attending all the short courses and uh, have a safe and good summer.
uh, for a student called Chen Ming Huo. So Michael said he already added the account to, to Galaxy. Um, I don't know why I cannot see it, but uh, you're welcome to check later. Maybe uh, like uh, Reefs. Let me see if I can restart something. Yeah, it's not there. So it's not there yet. I don't know why. So Michael said your account has already been added there. It's probably take a few minutes to show up. I'm not sure exactly. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the Zoom, and but you're welcome to send us emails any for any question you have about using HPRC or all the short courses.